Good morning. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Hey, Meredith, we're finally, we got connection. What are you up to? We got connection. It was a bit of a, it was a bit of a challenge. You know, I was just sitting here thinking that um, we are headed into the holiday weekend, right? I mean, we are headed into 4th of July. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like the 4th of July, does it? With everything canceled and everything gets weird, weird. Hashtag weird. Well, you know what I think is one of the strangest things is that, you know, we all don't go anywhere, but wow, is time moving fast. I don't know about you, but I can't believe it's going to be the, uh, I can't believe it's going to be the 4th of July. Somebody, somebody posted, aren't you glad the first half is over? You know, and yeah, here we are, July 2nd or whatever. And yet, really think about this. This whole thing didn't even start until really early March. So really, it wasn't yeah. even like it was the entire first half. It was just four months of it. Yeah. And wow. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been um, in, insane. In fact, okay, now think about it. Where were you on your last trip before COVID? Um, I was actually in Austin, Texas. I was on stage in Austin, Texas, and I was supposed to be um, on stage basically the following next couple of days. So I was just going to hang out and spend a couple of days in Austin. But my second conference went virtual. So uh, my husband and I went to we've got a little place down in Charleston, South Carolina. So that was basically the last trip um, uh, pre-COVID that I took. What about you? Well, that's kind of funny because we were together in uh, uh, Houston for the yeah. NSA conference. And then uh, I came home for a day or two. Then I went back to uh, Houston. Following week, I went to Orlando. And then, boom. And I was, in, I was in Orlando when Orlando was still open. And I had no more gotten home than like the next day. Disney World announces they're closing and all that sort of stuff. So... Yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's interesting. I think um, I'm going back to donate blood again uh, next week, and when I do that, uh, everybody tells me that when I donate blood this time, they're going to let me uh, do an they'll do the antibodies test on me. So that should be interesting. Well, that's funny. You and I think alike because I'm doing the exact same thing. <laughs> I want to see if I've got the antibodies, and uh, yeah, so it, it will it'll be now. It's kind of, Full disclosure, I've got type O, which is kind of a unique blood anyway. And supposedly that's less prone to get less prone to get COVID. Um, oh. I, I think we are I'm just kind of frozen. Yeah, you froze. you did. Uh, you did just kind of um, freeze up. But I tell you, I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you saw the jobs or the labor report this morning, but uh, but it looks like this economy is moving and things are um, things are doing pretty well. That a lot of people have gone back to work, and we are kind of limping our way through with our masks on and social distancing and doing everything we can do to to um, get and keep the economy moving. It personally made me very proud to. Uh, to be an American and see just how um, industrious and creative we are as entrepreneurs, as business owners, and as leaders. Yeah, you know, that 11.1% number, I saw that, I immediately pushed out to LinkedIn, to Facebook, to Twitter, to everywhere else. And uh, that that number was a lot lower than I was yeah. expecting. It'll be interesting to see in a couple of days or a week or so when we get the breakdown by states. Uh, mm -hmm. But the business of business can withstand a lot of headwinds. And I think that's very, very encouraging for everyone. Yeah, I, I was like, I was blown away. Uh, so how, yeah. how are things, what, what are you hearing from clients? I know we got to get into the show here in a bit, but I'd love to hear from you. What, what are you hearing from clients? What are you seeing? Yeah, you know, pretty much, um, I think it's this combination of uh, pretty much every client that I'm speaking to right now has definitely has worry and concern is, you know, as the numbers tick up uh, with COVID, what does this mean for them? Will they be allowed to uh, stay open? Combined with this, 
we're just doing what's right in front of us and we're just going to continue to invest and continue to, um, to, to grow the business and really being very innovative and creative. So I feel like the businesses that I'm working with, and I have both, I have those that are overwhelmed in this marketplace. COVID has brought on so much business to those that are really, um, uh, struggling. Um, everybody's kind of letting go of the fact that we don't know. We certainly don't know what will happen in the next, you know, three to six months, but they're putting their time, their energy and their resources. A lot of my clients have brought their furloughed workers back. They're heading back in uh, to the office. Most of my clients have put end of July on as the date that you've got to be back in the office uh, working. They've got their protocols in place and making it happen. That's very interesting because I'm kind of hearing mixed signals from here. You know, people are saying, okay, PPP is running out for most companies. So they're really saying, yeah. how do we get people back in? Is it going to work? And yes, that's being successful. I'm seeing a lot of companies pivot to new products. Uh, businesses that really were just tanked. I mean, they just, yeah. but they found a way to pivot and they're making it and they're making it happen. I'm seeing a little more, a um, little more hesitation on people kind of getting back into the office. That's kind of a little bit, I don't want to say surprising, but not unusual, uh, because I think more and more people are saying they're going to work from home. But here's what I'm finding very interesting: more and more people are saying we've got hiring plans, and you know what? We're going to hire under the auspice that salespeople will be working from home. So we're going to do from a much bigger geographic area. Uh, that's going to open up a much bigger pool. Yeah, it's, um, it is, uh, you know, that's a really good segue into today's show because we're going to be talking all about um, hiring, finding the right job. And the one thing I think we're definitely going to see in this marketplace is um, really great employees looking for better opportunities at companies that are growing and really great companies saying to employees that maybe just haven't been cutting it, we're not afraid to part ways now and we're going to be, um, we're going to be looking for, uh, a different level of employee to join our team. I think without a doubt, you are correct. This is the time when every company can upgrade themselves. Hey, Micah, why don't we go ahead and start the show because we got to get rolling, right? When we prospect with integrity, we will get customers who have integrity. Integrity is the foundation from which everything is built on. You better understand value. But at the end of the day, sales is a relationship business. It is a people business. It is a emotional business. Who has made a prospecting call today? This is Sales Logic. Most people refer to VanillaSoft as the solution. It's the solution to ensure sales reps make the right number of attempts for every lead across all channels, including email, social, and the phone. It's the solution to serve the rep the next best lead every single time. You need to get your solution at VanillaSoft.com. All right. Welcome to a sales logic, the show where we dive into the strategies. We talk about the tactics. You walk away with real working techniques you can use to build your sales funnel and well, sell a little more logically. I'm Meredith Elliott Powell, and I'm here with my co-host. Mark Hunter, the sales hunter and Meredith, it's always great to talk sales with you. What's on tap for today? Boy, we got some really good stuff on tap today. You know, as we know, this is the way that the show works. We always have a topic of discussion, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, we always kick the show off with a question. That's right. A question that actually comes from one of our uh, listeners. And we end with a lightning round. Those that's so you want to hang out to the end because we end up with basically a set of steps that you can put into place uh, um, immediately. So Mark, if somebody wants to send us a question, what do they need to do? 
Well, they need to go to saleslogicpodcast.com. That's our website. You can leave the question there, or you can just throw it out on social media and with the hashtag sales logic. But this is really your opportunity to, to throw a question out and who knows, we may be answering it next week. So the question we've got for today, I'll go ahead and introduce the question we have for today because I think it's really, really kind of pertinent to what we were talking about in the, the pre-show. For those of you who are lucky to catch us live on Facebook or LinkedIn, that's another story. But hey, we do hope that you catch up with us live here. So let, let me find that question here. I got, I got to find it. There, There's that question. There it is. And the question is, I love to sell but I need out of my sales job. My sales manager, the company, really struggling with their approach. It is all about the numbers and the widgets. How do I find a better sales job, one that aligns with my values and how I was taught to sell? Ooh, ouch. Jump yeah, in there. Yeah, that question. Well, that question remains anonymous, um, right? I didn't, I didn't want to uh, necessarily include the person uh, that that asked that question because I thought maybe this was a little bit anonymous. But I loved this question, and I, I really wanted to uh, include it because the way that it was actually asked to me is it was asking for what are some companies that I can recommend. Um, to, to go to work for. Well, of course, I put Vanilla Soft, our sponsor, right at the top um, of that list because I think they're a phenomenal company, not only with phenomenal leaders. But I really answered the question by saying, I don't think it's a company that you're looking for. It's a sales leader that you're looking for. Because, you know, I certainly, in my years in corporate, I worked for a company and I worked under people I loved, I respected, and I flourished under. And I could be inside the same company and work for another type of leader. And I just didn't. And a few years ago, I wrote an article called What to Do When Your Sales Manager Sucks, which maybe that's a whole nother... <laughs> Maybe that's a whole nother podcast um, uh, show. But I think the first thing you've got to do is start to really define what you're looking for in a sales leader. What's going to make you happy um, in going to work for somebody? I've got to laugh with that comment about, you know, sales leaders that suck. I mean, because I, 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 I want to hear I, I want to read that. Send that article to me. I want to read it. You know, it is interesting, though. It is the person. It is the person that you go to. But culture starts at the top, and 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 I see this in so many organizations. Yes, you take your cues from your sales manager, you take your cues from your sales boss. But it's amazing how the culture of the company does shape dramatically. And sure, I can thrive with a sales leader. Uh, that's very very positive. But if the ethos and the values of the company don't line up. Somewhere along the line, things are going to break down. And I think people are looking more than ever for that. I really say that there's three words that really come out right now. Not three words, but three measurements. Transparency, values, and integrity. And if those three don't scream out at you, if you can't realize, see those quickly, you don't want to go, you don't want to, go to work at that company. You, you want to stay away from them. Yeah. Sales is a, is a tiny community and look around at other sales professionals and notice the ones that you think are happy, that speak highly of their, um, of their company and their work. Um, reach out to them, find out why, what's really working uh, um, in their position and also ask about opportunities with their company. The best way to find a really good sales job is to work with salespeople who are really happy in their position. So I always like to choose, um, uh, I always go people first, company second. And I identify the people who are happy in their roles and reach um, and reach out to them. And you can tell a lot by just talking with some of their customers. Who are their customers? Who are the yeah. types of customers? Because, again, you know, integrity filled companies deal with integrity filled customers. So if you see yeah. a company that is that is dancing with, you know, the dark side, guess what? They're going to be on the dark side, too. 
Yeah. I mean, I think that's, you know, I think that's really good advice to look at the, um, the customers because I tell you, once in my life, I was looking for a new sales job. I was fairly young and I didn't have a lot of, uh, experience. And I got recruited because somebody, they felt I was very, uh, outgoing and, and recruited me into a sales position. I was new into sales. And when I got in there, everybody was really gung ho about what they were doing and what, they were selling, but it was a very competitive environment. The goal was to beat all the other salespeople on your team. They didn't have any need of outside competition because they were so busy trying to defeat one another. And they were selling a product that in my opinion, just my opinion, I didn't really feel like we were being completely truthful with what we were selling. So everything about that company lined up from checking the boxes but when it came to my own values and what I needed um, in terms of support, it was not a good fit for me. I do well in environments. I like competition to be on the outside of the company. Little competition with, uh, you know, with my teammates. But if I'm killing my goal, I like to be held accountable to try to help my other sales um, reps get where they need um, to get to. And, um, and, uh, and full transparency on products and services is really important to me. So it isn't a right or a wrong. I think Mark's making such a great point. You've got to figure out what your personal values are and how you like to sell and then go find a sales team in a company that, that aligns to those, um, to those values. Because those people who were there before me were tunning it in that they were really doing great. It was just not an atmosphere where I could make it. And remember, it's not as much about what you sell. And this may sound weird, but it's why you sell. It's the outcome you're creating in the customer. It, that's really what we're selling. We're selling outcomes. That's what you got to focus in on. Yeah. So, I, 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 that, I, Go for it. You were going to transition us. We probably better get into topic. <laughs> we are. We are kind of stepping on each other here. So why don't we kind of jump into the topic? Because again, the topic lends itself to the question. And the topic is what makes a great sales leader? What makes a great sales company? Jump in. Yeah. Um, I think... Uh, there's a lot and I'm feeling we'll just kind of bounce back and uh, back and forth here. Um, number one in a sales leader, I think what makes a really great sales leader is they are far more interested in their team succeeding than their own success. One of the challenges that we've all seen with, um, with sales leaders is that just because somebody's a really good salesperson, they get promoted to sales leader and they're really more of an individualist than a, um, than a people developer. And so I think a, a, a really good sales leader focuses more on developing others than they do on their, um, on their own personal sales and success. Well, that really comes out because you can see how they handle, how they respond to other, to the people that they lead. The salesperson, the sales leader who loves to step in and close the sale at the end, loves to be the, the fire chief who comes on the scene the sales leader who wants to be involved in every single decision going on. That is without a doubt the person who you want to avoid. It's yeah. the sales leader who you look at the sales team and you go, wow, there's some impressive people in terms of how they handle themselves, the customers they work with, how they work themselves through situations. You see the results of a sales leader is not measured by what they do. It's measured by the results their people get. Yeah. I also think that, um, you know, a, a really, a really great um, uh, sales leader really understands that he or she needs to treat their sales team differently. Um, you know, there are maybe newer or underperforming sales reps that you need to micromanage a little bit. You really do need to get in, hold their hand, work with them one on one. But your high performing reps, they don't need those same rules and they don't need those same um regulations. And so going to work um, for somebody who really understands that all everybody on the team has different needs at different times and is able to easily transition um, uh, for that. You know, sales leaders get directives from the top and a really good sales leader is able to say, 
These are the directives. How do I apply them in a unique way, in a motivating way to everybody who reports to me? That brings up an interesting point, and, I, and, I, and I'll go back to Lou Holtz. He was a coach, football coach for a number of years, and he was asked one time, how do you, how do you, how do you lead, how do you motivate 150, uh, 150 football players on your team? I was going to say salespeople. How, how do you motivate, how do you lead 150 football players on your team? He said 150 different ways. Because the good leader, the good leader knows that there, have to, there has to be adjustments with each person, yet they're able to navigate those in such a way not to the detriment of other people. And that's where I really come unglued when organizations say, we're going to have this uniform policy, no deviations, no changes. That tells me it's weak leadership because they don't know how to lead their organization. Yeah, consistency is definitely uh, is definitely a good a good thing, and I think companies need more of consistency. But I also think that um, having that flexibility to really understand and intimately understand your reps, which leads to the other piece of that, right? I mean, I think that um, that another piece is a sales leader with the kahunas and the courage to hold people accountable. To, um, to say, um, who understands, I always like to say, who understands the difference between a skill issue and a discipline issue. So they've laid out the accountability strong enough there and they check in to see if you're doing and hitting your numbers. But they're as focused on the behaviors that you're doing as they're focused on the numbers. Because if you're doing the behaviors and not hitting your numbers, you have a skill issue. If you're not doing the behaviors and not doing hitting your numbers, you have a discipline issue. And if you have a discipline issue, the sales leader needs to have enough courage to get you off the, you know, to get you off the payroll. But if you recognize a skill issue, you've got to be a good coach and you've got to go in and help people. So I would say to, to bring that succinct to, um, to say they're as mindful about the behaviors as they are about the numbers produced. Yeah. Something that I see in weak sales leaders, I should call them sales managers. They spend all their time with lower level people and yeah. because that's the only type of people they're comfortable with. And what's very interesting is you can tell how much a sales leader is respected in the organization by do the high achievers, do those top 10% people, do they like the sales leader with them or do they try to ignore them? That tells you a lot because the strong sales leader is very comfortable helping that, that top performer get to an even higher level. So I, I look at a sales leader and I, and I can tell immediately where are they spending their time? And that's going to tell me where they feel confident or shall I say where they really mm, need to exit stage right. Yeah, which, you know, um, let's talk a moment about good, great sales companies. I mean, um, you know, when I think about companies that I've, that I've gone to work for, that I've really flourished as a salesperson. It's where they have made sales a strategic priority. It's not something that's outsourced to the, um, you know, lead sales uh, person. It's really, it is, in, it is, um, it is embodied by the CEO. It is something that not only the CEO talks about, but the CEO does. I remember I worked for this company where our, um, our president would come out on occasion. I mean, we were a massive company, but he would show up in our area. And at that time I was nothing but a peon. And he would say, Meredith, how are things going? And I'd say, well, I'm doing really well with these accounts. I'm struggling with this one account. And he'd say, let's pick up the phone. Let's call him. Maybe a call from the president would put that one over the edge. And he'd go right into my office. He'd pick up the phone and he would call my client. And just the very fact that he demonstrated sales at that level just showed me how important sales was. And so I think really great sales companies, it's when the executive leadership team is right there in the trenches with you. Oh, with, with, without a doubt, I, I had a, both examples. I was with a company for a number of years where the CEO and the president, all the top leadership, they were out there with customers. Very yeah. sales oriented company. I was with another company for a while where the CEO was really afraid of customers, absolutely afraid of customers, would not go to any kind of industry, wouldn't even go to an industry event. And it was amazing. 
uh, the entire culture of the organization reflected that. Because what I find is this, if, if sales is not invited to the senior le- leadership table, their opinion is never going to count. And when their yeah. opinion doesn't count, it's amazing how quickly salespeople shut down. So you can identify who is the sales-oriented company pretty quickly by looking at their C-suite. And I also look at this. Look at their senior officers. Go out online. Take a look. What experiences have they had? Are there senior level officers that have come from sales, come up out of sales? Maybe not with that company, maybe with some other company. But again, those are really strong leading indicators of where we have an organization Hmm, I want to go to work for. And and a final piece that I always say, are they willing to invest in you? Are they willing to invest in you? Because how many times have you seen, you you see this a lot, where, where they hire, especially in small companies, They'll hire a salesperson and then think, okay, box checked. I hired a salesperson. Everything's going to be good. And within a few months, the salesperson quits because they're lost. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not giving them the tools that they need, um, that they need in order to, uh, to be successful. You know, one last thing I'll throw out there before we get into the lightning round is, um, is the difference between when I worked for companies who understood the sales process and companies who, who didn't, um, meaning that uh, our directives, when they didn't understand it, were constantly changing. They would give us products and services to sell. Then they would pull some products and services back and say, no, sell these products and services as if all we were selling was widgets and not really understanding that what we needed was a suite of products and services. And certainly we understood that they're trying to manage to a balance sheet and a, you know, a, you know, a profit statement. And so trying to certainly elevate some things that they wanted, but to understand that what we're selling is relationships. And if we're selling a product one month and that product disappears the next month, it's, it's not easy to keep the sales process going. So, you know, it is kind of back to, I think people really miss how much the C-suite needs to intimately understand sales and what it's like to be on a sales call, what it's like to engage with um, with your customers. And when you, so when you're having that interview to be asking those types of questions and get to feel out, um, you know, not only who you're going to be working for as a sales leader, but who you're going to be working for as a sales company. Which takes us to the lightning round. And this is a great lightning round. I'm going to pull it up here and it's hey, what to look for when seeking the perfect sales job. Go All after All right. Uh, go after. We'll keep these um, tight. That the, uh, that the sales team is happy and um, productive. Like they're ex- consistently as a team hitting their goals. Not one or two salespeople, but as a team hitting their goals. Okay. Is the company willing to invest in you? And this starts with the compensation package. If it's all commission, that means they don't have any investment in you at all. I tell new people coming out of college, you want to go to work for a company that has a high base pay because they're willing to invest in you. Um, I would say clear directives, not only what is expected of you, but have they told you what the bullseye is, who the ideal customer um, is, what products they're showcasing and why they're showcasing those products, and have they made it clear what the sales process is? If they do not have a defined sales process, run from that company. And I'll add to that is the onboarding process and the follow-up training all product training or is it skills development? If they're not willing to provide you with skills development, not just in the onboarding process, but ongoing to keep your skills sharp, you want to run from that company. Yeah. You want to spend some time um, interviewing the uh, sales leader. You think that the sales leader is interviewing you, but Find out what they do day in and day out. And if they see part of their um, job as developing and investing in their sales team. I say, look at where salespeople go when they leave that company. Do they move on to bigger and better positions? Because if they do, that means they were trained well. That means they were developed well. That means they've been having a level of success. If you see people mm, stagnating there, 
or wind up going just to a lower level company, then you go, hmm, this isn't a sales focused sales development, sales leader company. One more, Meredith, then we'll kind of close down the show. Yeah, that, that leads to such a um, great one. Look at the retention rate of salespeople. Um, I don't want salespeople who have been there 25 or 30 years, and I don't want sales, the average um, number of years people have been on the team, less than two. You're looking for some good tenure, um, but not so baked that people are stuck in their ways. I'm going to add one more, then, then we will close it down because you brought up a good one, and that is poaching. Are, are companies trying to poach their salespeople? Because if they're trying to be poached, that means they must be good. Other people must think they're right. So, hey, with that, and again, remember, back up at the top, we talked about the question, Sales Logic Podcast. Send your question in there. We love to answer it. It's how we kind of kick off the show, but we got to close it down. So, hey, thank you for listening to Sales Logic this week. If you like what you hear, subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast app. If something we have said has earned you a single dollar, consider telling a friend about our show. It's how we grow to help you grow. I'm Mark Hunter. And I'm Meredith Elliott Powell. Remember, when you sell with confidence and integrity, uncertainty suddenly becomes your competitive advantage. And the sale becomes logical. We'll see you next week. Most people refer to VanillaSoft as the solution. It's the solution to ensure sales reps make the right number of attempts for every lead across all channels, including email, social, and the phone. It's the solution to serve the rep the next best lead every single time. You need to get your solution at VanillaSoft.com.